The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, <clears throat> set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. I'd like to invite any children for it for children. <laughs> I'm telling you guys too. <laughs> we're, we traveled all the way to Canada to help people who were there. Um, but I want to talk first about some of the things we noticed that were maybe a little bit different in Canada. So what did you guys notice that was, that was different in Canada? Popcorn salad. Anybody can go. The money. The money. Yeah. So what was different about the money? It was plastic. Uh-huh. And yeah, it's kind of like their dollars are like a plasticky kind of feeling and uh, different colors. They're, they're actually waterproof, but they can melt apparently. <laughs> it has braille on it. And it has braille on it too, which is really cool. And the little plastic see-through part on it. What else was different about Canada? <clears throat> they sold their milk in bags. Oh yeah, their milk came in bags, which is weird. You have to cut it and then pour it from the bags. What else was different? Uh, the traffic cones. Yeah, the traffic cones were kind of weirdly shaped and different orange, colors. Orange and black. Yeah, orange and black, right? They used uh, the metric system. Oh, yes, and they used the metric system. It's really hard to drive 100 kilometers an hour. Yeah, <laughs> it, feels, it makes you feel like you're going fast. We also had no idea how much uh, we were paying for the gas because it was in Canadian dollars per liter, whatever that is, right? And they also, what about how they talked? Did anybody notice any? Do they talk funny? Yeah? Sorry. They didn't really talk that way. Yeah. <laughs> but some of them did. Some of them did. Some of them said sorry. Yeah. Right? So we had all these different experiences. But when we got to Canada, we met up with a lot of Christians there. And what, what about them? Were, were they like, were they any different up there? They were not different one little bit. Not one little bit. Thank you, Madeline. They were all the same. And God was the same when we got there, too. So no matter where we went, uh, no matter where we go, God is the same wherever we travel, uh, despite whatever differences that we might have. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you guys, I've got these coloring pages for you, and if you want to take one, you can do that. It's a maple leaf, and it says, God is everywhere you go. We'll have some of our high schoolers pass that out, and you can take a colored pencil, and you can draw a cross in the middle to remind you that God is with you wherever you go. And, or if there's a place you've traveled before, you can uh, draw a picture of that place, too. So let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. People are different. People are different. But no matter where we travel. But no matter where we travel. You are the same. You are the same. In 
Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up, all you guys. There you go. Yes. All right. And while these guys are kind of getting situated, I'm going to invite our high schooler. We can do a little bit something different for our servant time today. Our high schoolers are actually going to be sharing stories about their trip to Canada with us. And we're going to kind of do this interview panel style. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask some questions and we'll, we'll kind of go popcorn the first couple questions and they will, uh, they'll tell you some things about Canada and their trip that they noticed. So, um, so let's get started. My first question for you guys is very simply, so what was the most interesting thing that you learned about Canada, or interesting thing that you noticed while you were in Canada? Just go for it, Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was it ready? So, something interesting that I noticed was just, as we were driving around, I noticed how clean everything was, and how they really went out of their way to, like, preserve nature. Like, sometimes in America, they just plow through some of those things because it's what's convenient. They had this bridge over this massive like canyon of like just trees and stuff and they probably could have just gone straight through it but they chose to make this bridge to preserve nature which i thought was cool cool so. megan there you go um this is kind of random but whenever we talked to canadian citizens about american politics they could tell <laughs> us everything they had like their opinion they were like i don't trust this person because and like they were just so knowledgeable and then when they asked us about Canadian politics, you're like, uh, we don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has one? All the candy there was so much bigger in the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> There's these Kit Kats, and they're three times the size of regular king size. They're huge. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Um, so everywhere you went, like stores and stuff would have little like maple leaves in their logos. It was so cute. Um, like McDonald's, <laughs> I think like the M, you know, like the bottom of the M was, there was like a maple leaf on it. And there were like, was Pizza Pizza? pizza have, yeah, yeah, there's a, a, a pizza place chain called Pizza Pizza and in the, at the A's it had maple leaves. And I just thought that was pretty cute how they were like, yes, maple leaves. Yep. All right. Did you have one or no? Well, on their Oreos, they had the whole use. All right. So uh, my next question is, we've answered some of this, so kind of answered this already. Uh, what about the food? How is the food different? And someone said they were surprised that wasn't already in America. <laughs> um, so the city was very diverse. There's tons of different like cultures and beliefs there. Um, when we were there, we got to experience Korean food, so that was a lot of fun. And then uh, one day when we were painting the house, we had Somalian food because the program they have you paint someone's house from and they uh, make you a meal from their native country. Yeah, I was in a different group from him, and but we also did the refresh program, which is the painting thing, and we and, and we went to two people's houses, and they were both from Pakistan. We had some really amazing food. One place we had this dish called dal, which was a rice dish with like this orange sauce on it. It was a little spicy. It was really delicious. And the second day was kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. We had. Chicken curry, which was amazing. The chicken was so tender. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then fresh mango. We had this flatbread called naan, and it was like they freshly made it. It was warm, kind of chewy. It was just amazing. And chickpea rice. Oh, and chickpea rice. It was good because it was like spicy, but it wasn't like overwhelmingly spicy. It was like just right. <laughs> what was the question? Um, on the last work day, we went to this place called St. Jude's, and it's a 
like a kind of a camp thing for mentally disabled adults, and they were having a barbecue for lunch. And so the day before, we went to Walmart, and it was really nice. And <laughs> we were shopping, and the brats there were super cheap. We were really surprised. And then we went to the bun aisle, and the buns were like twice as much as they cost here. So <laughs> the meat was cheap, but the bread was not. Yeah. <laughs> like random things that were expensive. Expensive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're just gonna pass the pass the microphone down for this next question. Um, uh, but it was what was the next question? Oh yeah. What was your favorite thing about the work sites? So say maybe the places where you served, and then your favorite one or what you liked about. Them. My favorite place was um, the uh, Good Shepherd. Um, shelter. I met this guy named Greg and he actually managed to go all the way from Chicago where he like lived all the way up to Toronto like being homeless. So that's around 770 miles he walked up there. That's a long way. Right, I, I went to a, like a home for elderly people with Alzheimer's and we, I, had, I got to play like volleyball with like the uh, elderly patients there and we met a, a, a woman named Bernice I'm sure we all remember her. She's very energetic, you could say. Colorful, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite was the refresh program where you got to paint people's houses. And I liked it because you could just visibly see the difference. You walk in there, and some of these people who were less fortunate did have like paint peeling off their walls. And then a couple hours later, you have a really good time, and then you get to see like the house is completely different with all this new paint. My favorite part was also the refresh program. I really liked being able to go and make a change in these people's lives, and it was really neat being able to be inside of their houses and getting to see all of their family heirlooms and things from their country. And we got to talk to them about their families and like what life was like before they came to Canada. I liked going to St. Jude's, which was the place for the mentally disabled adults. Um, it was really fun. We just kind of hung out. We played games. Um, I made a lot of friends there. It was really cool. Um, I made a really good friend with this woman named Samantha, and she was in a wheelchair. And she was just the best. She loved animals. And my favorite part, probably, of the whole trip was they brought animals in. Um, like, I don't know, it was like an expo kind of thing. They brought a few animals. They could hold them. And, and she was excited, she was asking all day, is there going to be a bunny there? Are they going to bring a bunny? I love bunnies. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe. And they brought a bunny. And she got to hold it. And she was so excited. And it just made my life. And that was, that was my favorite part. I also really enjoyed going to St. Jude's, just being able to hang out with all these people. Like, they just loved so unconditionally. They were so happy that you were just there. It was an incredible experience. Uh, so the second day, um, my group we went to a nursing home, and uh, the director there was pretty nice, but she was a little weird. She gave us a wheelchair, so the whole day we were just kind of pushing each other around. Uh, and then she gave us a really long lunch, probably like an hour and 45 minutes. So we started wheelchair racing. And, uh, that was a lot of fun, so I think that was probably my favorite part. <laughs> part was also probably the painting. I just kind of like seeing the difference over just a few hours. Cool. And let's just uh, keep it down there. And our last question is, where did you see God working on your trip? Could be anywhere. Uh, probably with the people who we helped paint uh, their homes. They were just so excited to see their new house paint. It's great. Where I saw God at work was um, at the Salvation Army. When we were there, everyone seemed just kind of like sad. We brought in a lot of energy and we started playing games and they all just like were smiling. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so personally, I saw God the most and enjoyed happiness of the people's houses that we painted. Where I saw God most was, we haven't talked about them that much, but we had these site leaders who ran the site. They stay there all summer. Um, they find these work sites for us and they run some service stuff like at the church we stayed at and it was just 
really incredible getting to know them, and they kind of shared their faith stories, so I could really see God and how excited they were to be doing this and helping other people and helping us grow in our faith. I saw God um, when we went, one of the nights for activity, we went on this kind of tour of Toronto and this guy led in, his name is EJ, and he um, kind of runs this like homeless shelter in Toronto and he took us around to different places and told us um, different stories about his work and everything and he was just really honest and um, one of the things that stuck with me that he said was he asked us if all people in good neighborhoods are good and we're like well no and so then he goes are all people in bad neighborhoods bad then and we're like well I guess also no so he kind of helped everyone to like see how we can help others around us and love each other unconditionally the way God wants to. Um, I, I saw God the most at St. Jude's the second day. Um, the first day we kind of noticed how a lot of the adults were nonverbal and they tended to stick to themselves and kind of isolate themselves from the rest of the main group. And the second day after lunch, the leaders of the camp sort of thing uh, started playing music. It was a lot of Christian worship songs and they were like on the guitar and on the drums and they were singing. And it was so cool to see how all of the mentally disabled adults really came alive when the music started playing and all of them knew all the words. And there was one guy who used the chair in front of him as a drum and he knew like all of the songs <laughs> and all the beats. And so it was really cool to see how the worship music really touched all of these mentally disabled adults. I saw God the most among the volunteers that worked next to us, and then, uh, but especially in the Salvation Army. We met these two people, Judy and Carson, and they just devoted their whole life to this program and to helping other people. Where I saw God was with the uh, people in the communities there in Toronto. You didn't see a lot of homeless people. You could really tell people helped each other out. Not a lot of discrimination. Just like when working together. I saw God a lot just working around us, like um, what he said about how there wasn't any homeless people, you could tell they are working together and like, solving a lot of issues like that. Well, because uh, I'm a pastor and we like to hear ourselves talk, I have a couple of things to share with you. Um, just first of all, these these guys were awesome, and they, they gave a week of their time uh, to spend with uh, strangers, complete strangers, walking to different people's homes that they'd never met before, paint their houses. Um, and the reason that we do these trips is because um, is because as as we heard in our gospel story today, you know Jesus sees this woman who had been crippled for eighteen years, and he sees her. And he, and he puts his he puts his hands on her and he heals her. And, and she stands up straight for the first time in 18 years. And I think that part about where Jesus actually sees this woman, uh, I think that is actually the powerful part of that story because this woman had probably been overlooked her entire life. And so when we go on these mission trips, that is what we do. We go and we see people in their communities uh, and how they're living, and, and we see our neighbors in a different light. And so all of these guys, their eyes were opened and their hearts were opened to these complete strangers, and, uh, and I know that each one of them walked away from that experience uh, changed and touched by God. Um, so I thank God for them, and I thank God for the people in Toronto, uh, all the people we worked with there, and, uh, and for all of this, of course, and for God, we say thanks be to God. Amen. And let's give them a round of applause.